Hi guys, to begin the first tutorial for inline hockey, we're going to be looking at the difference between inline hockey gear and ice hockey gear, specifically the pros and the cons for playing inline hockey. The most obvious difference is in the skates. So you've got on the left hand side you've got your typical inline skate, on the right hand side you've got your typical ice hockey skate. So let's start with the ice hockey skate. It's set up in three parts, you've got the boot, you've got the holder, and you've got the blade. Similar for inline hockey is that the boot is the exact same boot as what would be used for ice hockey. The difference lays in the fact that we don't have a holder but we have a chassis which comes in two different types. Either you've got the traditional chassis which holds four wheels that are the same size or you can have in this case a high-low chassis with the front two wheels being a little bit smaller to accommodate a more aggressive stance and playing style. And then you've got your wheels and your bearings. So just like with profiling on an ice hockey blade we have different sets of wheels for different sets of surfaces and playing styles. So moving on to the shin pads, there's absolutely no difference between inline and ice. So the stick, the gloves and the elbow pads are exactly the same for both inline and ice. However, inline players oftentimes don't wear shoulder pads because, for example, the league and the rules that we play by are non-checking, thus there's no need to wear shoulder pads. Whereas obviously that checking component for ice hockey demands for some protection. So then we move on to the helmet which is exactly the same as with ice hockey. You can choose whether you wear a full cage, a visor or a combination of both depending on the league rules or the country rules. So here we've got the traditional ice hockey pants it being attached around the waist and then the rest of the pants is pretty much free hanging so you see there's no contoured fit. I can just move my hand within the pants. Sometimes with certain models you've got a mesh, a flexible mesh here to allow free movement or free range of movement rather. And then we move to the inline pants which are also called a girdle. You can see that they are distinctly different because the panels are contoured around his body so you've got his hips, you've got panels on the quads, you even have panels that you can change like this one. If you want more or less protection, even make it a little more lightweight. One of the neat things about the girdle is that they have air pockets so that the air can move freely around your body because essentially the inline game is being played indoors and not on ice. So the cooling off factor is a big thing. And then the last bit is that a girdle always comes with a cup, whereas with traditional ice hockey pants you'd have to buy that separately. All right, so let's take a look at the differences between an ice hockey puck and an inline puck. As you can see visually, the ice hockey puck, it's made out of vulcanized black rubber, whereas the inline puck is actually made out of plastic and it has these little raised dots. They are actually put there so that it reduces the friction with the ground and it actually smoothens the glide on concrete. So let's see if there's any weight difference. So the ice hockey puck weighs in at five 0.7 ounces and the inline puck weighs in at exactly 4.15 ounces. So for players transitioning from ice to inline or vice versa this might affect your stick handling and the way you play the game. So keep that in mind. Everyone thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of this inline content let us know what you think. Let us know what you want to see next and don't forget to click the subscribe button below. So what we're going to be covering in this tutorial today is how do we properly do a hockey stop for inline hockey. So for ice hockey players transitioning into inline hockey,